Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig and today we are doing an extended test of the Ariat Hybrid Rancher H2O Waterproof Boots. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya and then I'll be on my way. Before I begin, I need to mention that this video is also sponsored by Ariat. However, it is in my contract with them not to let that affect my opinion or review of these boots. I take that part of that contract very seriously and always try to remain objective because I know everybody out there is looking for something different in a pair of boots. Huge thanks to Ariat for supporting the channel. Several of you requested that I do a video on the Ariat Hybrid Rancher H2O boot over the last year and Ariat was kind enough to agree to sponsor this video and send me these boots for the purposes of this review. So. What are we waiting for? Let's get into the rundown. The Ariat Hybrid Rancher H2O waterproof boot features a waterproof full grain leather on the foot and the shaft. It also has a wide square toe with a double stitched welt. And I believe that the stitching mainly is just running through the midsole since you can't see it on the outsole except for at the toe. You can see it a little line of extra stitching at the toe and then also see it on the outsole here as well and it's not done in a way that is appealing visually because they just sort of traced along the line of stitching that was already there at the toe so i'm not really a big fan of that look but it is a pair of work boots and i do appreciate the fact that they want to add a little bit of reinforcement at the toe, one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to shoes and work boots, it's when the sole separates from the boot at the toe. I absolutely hate it. So I can appreciate the fact that they are reinforcing it there, even though it doesn't look very good. This boot is also 11 inches tall and features a six row stitch pattern done by machine, and it has colors orange, yellow, and blue. Love the stitch pattern. For a heel, we have a 1 and 5 eighths inch composite Stockman heel that's made to look like stack leather. However, it is a composite block. This is something that I'm not really fond of from Ariat. They do this a lot on their boots. They put a block heel on and then paint lines to make it look like stack leather. Just leave it a block as far as I'm concerned. I don't need it to look like stack leather. It's a work boot. I'm not trying to impress anybody. For an outsole, we have Ariat's DuraTread outsole, and this DuraTread has semi-aggressive tread, which is definitely gonna be nice because you have a waterproof boot, you're gonna want something with some grip if you're gonna be working in wet condition. On the inside, we have a padded mesh lining, and on the inside of that mesh, there is an internal impermeable layer. So you have the waterproof leather and a layer on the inside, making it even more waterproof. The mesh lining does tend to be fragile. So that's one thing that I have against cloth and mesh linings is that it tends to rip, especially in work boots. But that's part of the cost savings that you get when buying this boot. For an insole, we have their 4LR All Day Cushioning Insole. I like this 4LR Insole All Day Cushioning. The 4LR Massage Cushioning Insole, I think it is, is better, but this is definitely a comfortable one from my experience. And like I said, these boots are coming in on the more inexpensive side of things at around $200 on the Ariat website. However, if you search for them, from one of their retailers, you may be able to find it for even cheaper than that. And they are made in Vietnam. Now, let's try this boot on and see how it looks and feels. All right, so I have on the Ariat Hybrid Rancher H2O boot right now, and that insole does feel very comfortable. I feel like that's one of the values that you get from Ariat right off the bat is you put on their boot and you know exactly what to expect. That cushion insole, they're very good at insoles. They feel really good when you put it on. Um, not really getting any spiritual experience from this boot. It's pretty much what you would expect. It has a very sneaker athletic like feel to it, but in the form of a work boot. Now I chose the size 10 and a half D for this boot 
and usually I have to size down a little bit, maybe about a half size or a whole size when I choose Ariat. And that's uh, something that you might need to consider as well, depending on the toe shape. The leather isn't as stiff as some other Ariats that I've tried in the past. Just came off of a video of the cow hand, and that was a very stiff leather. Definitely not as stiff as the Rambler or the Plano that I've done in the past. So it's, it's a nice in-between. It definitely feels like it needs some breaking in. So I'll probably walk around the block, go in the woods or something like that before I actually use these on an extended test for work or doing anything all day in them, it's always a good idea to break in a pair of boots a little bit before you wear them 12, 14 hours a day. Here's what the boots look like POV. I mean, it's nothing to write home about. These are work boots. You know, you're not gonna impress anybody in these. So um, I'm really not super excited about the way that they look but as long as they perform the way that they're supposed to and keep the water out, that's all that matters to me. First impression of these boots is they feel sturdy. I like the outsole. It's got some grip there. I like the insole, typical comfort from Ariat, but I'm just concerned about that lining. It's a mesh cloth lining that doesn't feel as durable as the one that they have inside the work hog. So that's probably where I'll be keeping most of my attention during the extended test. And that's what's next. We gotta put these to work. We gotta see if they're really waterproof and if that lining holds up. So let's get it. It's time to work. Since this boot is waterproof and soft toe, I figured it would be great for landscaping and yard work. So I went home and did a little bit of work on my mom's garden here. As you can see, we needed to clear out the weeds and I started out by edging all around the garden so I knew exactly where I was going to be working. After I was done with the edging, I needed to get all of the weeds out but I didn't have any extra topsoil, so I just did the best that I could with the hoe until it broke. Yeah, this hoe needed a screw. And once that was done, I noticed that I was getting a little bit of help from my backup, but not for long. It didn't matter much though, because the rest didn't take very long. I got all of the weeds out, leaving as much topsoil as possible. Then my mom picked out these plants and the positions where they were to go in the garden, so I started digging holes to put them in the ground. There's one. Big scoop. There's two, the pretty one. On to number three. Oh, I hit something there. It was actually the septic tank. So what we're gonna do is move this rock to where we were gonna put those flowers and put the flowers here where there's an ant home, but uh, they can be easily displaced. Yep, and there's no tank here. Easy in the ground there. I like these ones too. Next up was taking these bulbs from a different garden and then transplanting them into the garden that I'm working on. Of course, bulbs are pretty resilient, so you can just cut them up and put them in the ground and they should do fine right there. Planting a few extra bulbs before we go on to the next step, which is mulching. That's right, let's do it. I'm actually glad it wasn't raining during mulch because if you've ever done mulch in the rain, it just sticks to you and it's a pain in the ass. So even though I wanted to test out the waterproof capabilities of this boot, I'm happy that it wasn't raining when I was mulching. Not bad after day one, it's looking great. Day two, more mulch, 
I just needed to put a little bit more mulch alongside the house here just to make it look a little bit better. No new plants were going in over here, so it's just mulch. And that's pretty much it. Apparently, mulch not only looks good, but it's also really comfortable. Malka was loving it. Until I kicked her out, that is. And here it is, the finished mulch, and it looks great. Look at that before and after. Love the look of this new garden. And so that my dad didn't get too jealous of me doing all the work for my mom in the garden, I decided to mow the yard as well. Looking spiffy. After the mulching was done and the yard was mowed, it actually started raining and you couldn't ask for better timing. So I decided to test out a little bit of the waterproofing of this boot and sure enough, nothing came through. My feet were dry. Overall, we did some good work in the Area Hybrid Rancher H2O boots. I really enjoyed testing out these Hybrid Rancher H2O boots and they held up well in the wet weather, not only during the extended test, but on random excursions that I had throughout the three weeks that I was wearing this boot. And during that time, I did find that it is not 100% waterproof. I wore this quite a bit on several different hikes or just out in the wet weather and it did very, very well until I just wore it this past weekend while hiking in an area that was pretty much all water. Like the trail was four miles long and I swear two miles of it was basically a creek bed. And to be honest, this boot cannot handle that much water. Towards the end of the hike, it definitely did soak through a little bit. In any other boot that's not waterproof, my feet would have been just drenched Really, my feet were just a little damp, but still water did come through after several hours of these being submerged in water in and out while walking. But if you have a job that requires you to stand with your feet submerged in water for hours on end, chances are you're wearing tall rubber boots. With all that said, I was very happy with the performance of this boot and it kept my feet dry for 95% of the time. And I was really testing it too. It was fun going in all that water. I didn't hold back. Now that we got the waterproofing out of the way, let's talk about the sizing because I feel like these run just a little bit small. And I think a lot of that has to do with the lining because there is an extra bit in here, that impermeable layer and then the mesh, which gives this a little bit more of a thicker inside. So I was only able to wear thin socks with this and I would have loved to wear a thicker work sock. Looking back on it, I would have gone a half size up and tried the 11D because this did feel a little bit small. And I would have also liked the extra cushion that comes from some work socks because the 4LR all day cushion is just okay. I think it's my fourth favorite insole from area. It's definitely not the worst, but it's not the best. I still like the ATS, the ATS Pro and the all day massage cushioning for LR. So definitely the fourth, probably, probably the fourth best area insole that I've tried. So I would have liked a little bit more cushion and some of that cushion can come from work socks like my favorite work sock, the Thorlos 12 hour work shift sock. I remember my feet sweating quite a bit more than what they would in other boots. And that's probably because that impermeable layer just doesn't breathe very well. I mean, that's kind of common with waterproof boots. They lack a breathability to sort of keep that sweat down. So you may find that when it's not raining out and it's warm, your feet will sweat more in these boots than they will in others. But that kind of just comes with the waterproof territory anyways. They do run a little bit heavy, but that's what comes with a work boot. It's definitely not as heavy as a steel toe boot. And by the way, this does not come with a safety toe. This is strictly a soft toe waterproof boot. Another thing that I'm a little bit concerned about with this lining is that there's lots of seams. I mean, you can see them everywhere you look in this boot, and that's just more areas for things to catch and rip, especially with it being a mesh or a cloth. 
and it already having a lower durability in the grand scheme of things. I hope to be proven wrong that it won't rip, but I'm gonna be wearing this boot a lot. One, because I like it. I like that I can wear it in wet weather and keep my feet dry. So this late spring, I'll be wearing it quite a bit during rainy days in the summer and definitely during the winter up here in the Northeast. So be sure to catch my end of the year boot ranking video for the latest update if you wanna know how this lining has held up throughout the months in this year. And if it is already 2022, then the video for that is up here. But if it's not, then we'll all have to wait until it is. I'm really interested and kind of excited about trying out this mesh lining more because I want to be proven wrong. I like this boot, especially for the price point at $175. I feel like you're getting a lot here even though it is not 100% waterproof. I had a really good time working in this boot and I look forward to wearing it much more throughout the year. Let me know what you think of the Ariat Hybrid Rancher H2O boots down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today. Huge thanks to Ariat for sponsoring today's video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I do a lot of work on this channel. Try to do two boot videos a week and then some music videos on top of that. And I want you here for it all because we have a damn good time. I'll see you around. Peace. Oh, those hybrid rancher H2Os can be a great wet defense. That is unless you have them submerged for hours on end. Thank you so much for watching today. Why don't you check out this video up here that I did about the Ariat Work Hogs. Or I got a little music traveling tour video down here that I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Have a good one.